welcome to the Dogish Podcast, the podcast dedicated to dog parents and the topics, events, and personalities impacting their lives. My name is Sylvia West, and I am a certified professional dog trainer and dog mom at Dog Up in This Bitch. With me, as always, is my father, lost co-host Jason Arias. He runs forever, USA. That's that was, it. That was like Did super like exciting. That? that is the difference between an intro in the afternoon versus some of the intros at 8 a.m. in the morning. Can I be honest too? I took a nap. Oh, so. that sounds nice. Yeah. So my brain is like firing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah. So today's guest, first of all, I should say, we're diving back into the wild and wonderful world of dog sports. Yep. So that's happening. Pun, pun intended. Yeah. And we're, we're making this... a splash into the <laughs> yeah we are just one though not two splashes right anyways this is katie cones she's 17 years old which is mind-blowing she's already competing internationally with agility nationally with the sport that we're gonna dive definitely pun intended into this week which is dock diving so let's just get to it yeah yeah well let's, i want to uh, introduce you to katie she's super fun Perfect. Well, welcome everybody. How are you today? Good. Oh. Super good. I am super, yeah, super excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited to meet you, Katie and Dash and whoever else you're introducing us. You, who do you have on your lap there? This is Max. He's the, oh, well, he's asleep, but he's Warren. He's like, um, mom. He's a water collie puppy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't want to wake up. He's taking his afternoon nap. Mm. And how many border collars do you have? Two. The, just the two of them. Yes. Are they related or no? Not more, but I'm only 17, so I don't think my parents would love it. <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah. And are uh, are the two of them related or no? Um, they are very loose. Yeah, she's actually related to like very far cousins from max's dad so yeah oh, so a little bit yeah exactly a little bit related yeah well Very we're cool. yeah well we're so excited to have you because you are not only a dog mom you are a sports competing competitor yes yeah with yeah. your dogs yes. which i mean we've 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 already taken our listeners down the agility rabbit hole right but this is a sport that i actually know very little about mm -hmm. but i'm really interested in oh, yeah. so i wanted you to kind of talk to everybody first of all what what is dock diving like break that down for everybody okay so basically it's it's about a 50 feet you know running space you go up a ramp and there's about 50 feet of turf usually it's just a line and so you can put your dog at the very very back of the 50 feet or you can put them at the very front wherever you want and so a lot of it is i found out is figuring out their striding because you know you have you have 50 feet to use that's a lot and a lot of dog strides are very different and you have to make sure you have their measurements right or put him back at the right line to put his back feet you know just to make sure he doesn't jump early there's a lot that goes into it that i didn't really think about when i first started um and then and when, when did you first start so i was 12 when i first started um and i had my golden retriever uh, I actually started with agility with her. And then when I was about 13, I started doing dock diving with the border collies because I got, or just Dash. So I got Dash about a year after I started doing agility with Michael and Retriever because she's, she's nine. And she just didn't seem to enjoy it much. She honestly enjoyed going and seeing the judges much more. So the border collies, I just realized they loved water and had such a um, high toy drive, you know. Um, so... I thought it'd be fun. And so I just started doing it in my pool outside in my backyard. And then I figured out you can go compete. And that was really fun. Wait, so this is something. So you like found out about it and you started training just at your pool? Yes. 
yeah, I, a lot of things were self-taught when I was 12. I didn't have much of an idea of what I was doing, but I just knew I wanted to get into the job. <laughs> and and so just what, like throwing things into the pool and yes, I was hoping they would, okay. Boy. Yeah, so I started him just on the steps in our pool, you know, because no dog, unless they're crazy about water, is going to jump straight into the deep end. So I would start, you know, slowly, slowly getting him used to it. So the first step, just like, throw the toy in, just make it like a super fun game and just like have him get it and like praise him, all that, and throw the toy to him out of water a couple of times and like just so his mind isn't super focused on it all the time and just, you know, and so I'd work it up every single day until I got to the point where I could have the toy. I could be, I could put him in a sit stay and lead out and throw the toy and he'll go get it while and, I'm throwing it, you know? And I'm, and I'm assuming it, 12 years old you didn't really have any other experience training dogs before that not at all not at all but I mean I just I loved my dogs and it was my favorite thing to do ever I would get home from school and spend hours outside with the with Dash and I think that's why he's so good is because I just spent so much time with him so now you and Dash you compete together yes okay what is okay so, okay. So hold on a second. Cause I'm trying to like, <laughs> I know I'm wrapping my brain around all of this too. Everybody I... needs to just pump the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make this like visual for any of our listeners who like have never right. every, I'm sure everyone now is like profusely looking up dog diving, but it literally is what it sounds like. It's a dog running dog. to the end of a dock and mm -hmm. leaping into water right and then they go for a distance like how many feet they yes yeah, so how does that work right so it's there's markers on the side of the pool and so it shows every foot and there's um there's a couple divisions but it's where the dogs the base of their tail lands which i find pretty interesting because wouldn't you think it would be where their paws land like i always thought that but apparently the base of their tail so like, yeah, the base like, of their basically tail. where their butt lands yeah pretty much that's just the proper way of saying it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you no, don't he, have to be proper yeah, here, here, here on on the doggish Please. podcast we use naughty words like butt all the time all the time <laughs> <laughs> okay so where they're the bit where the, I'll, I'll be I'll be appropriate. So where the base of their tail lands. Right. Is now are they judged? How how do they break this down? Because like I imagine that like my tiny Pomeranian right. is not gonna go nearly as far as yes. as you know, dash the border collie. Right. So how does what does that break down to? So there's a couple of divisions. There is novice, junior, senior, master, and elite. Okay. Dash is an elite, which is the highest you can jump. So of course he's competing against all these Malinois and those huge dogs, which is pretty difficult. But, um, and they also have like a senior dog, like a, a division for older dogs and a, a lap dog division, which is little dogs. So the, only little dogs compete against little dogs and bigger dogs compete against bigger dogs. I gotta be, I've never, like I've seen the dog diving, especially like with the labs and yeah. retrievers and the call. I've never uh, considered a lap dog diving event oh, yeah. and now i really really want to watch this okay i'm gonna need to learn more about this we have to take a quick break all right so like we've gone on this quick little journey like and all these things are opening up in my mind you started you're 12 years old and you and you decided to which to, is just nuts by the way right <laughs> and you're gonna teach your dog and yourself how to start dock diving just at your pool and now uh, did i read correctly that you're on um like a, a team yes well we're on team usa for agility so we were supposed to go to finland last summer and or and then portugal this summer but of course for corona it got so this, canceled so this isn't just like a, a local sport for you this is something that's taking you no. all over the world yeah so are your dogs like really, really good at this? Like, are, are they just the, like the best? Like, like, tell me who we're talking to here. I want to know, are we just um, sitting with celebrities in the dock diving world right now? Um, I don't know. You know, Dad, <laughs> I would say he's pretty good. His, um, his personal best is 26 
feet, six inches, which is a lot for a little 30 pound dog. But, um, hold on. How many feet? Uh, 26 20, feet, 26, oh, feet. 26 feet, six inches. Okay. So, okay. Now here's where my brain gets really curious. So you told me, you told us, <laughs> it's just you and I talking today, Katie. Don't worry about everybody else. Um, okay. So you've got 50 feet of running right before now does he use all 50 feet i mean how do you even begin to figure that out like oh my dog only needs 10 feet for the best launch right so dash i usually send him back like with maybe four feet before the end of the dock just because he has a little problem with jumping early he just gets so excited and you know if they jump early off the dock you're losing um, that, footage yeah, you're losing you're losing you know until uh -huh. you're at a point where it was just like he was jumping three feet early and it's like, Oh, I really could have used those three feet, you know? Um, but yeah, a lot of people, you know, who are just getting started, like to put their dogs really close to the dock. Like that's what I do with Max. If I want to, you know, just get him really comfortable with it. It's just to put him really close to the water. So it's just not a lot of running. It's just more simple. Like, Oh, it's right there. My toys right there. My owner's right there. And I can see the ramp. I can see everything, you know? Um, but a lot of people put them all the way back just so they can use all of the feet to their advantage. And so yeah. being based in North Carolina, so we, so you're traveling all over or have the opportunity, like, do you travel all over the world fairly often? Well, um, see my mom and I, we, we usually go on trips usually every weekend, almost every other weekend. Um, so sometimes we'll do dock diving, fast cat, and agility in one weekend at one place, which is what we're going to do next weekend. But um, That's the other thing you just said, fast cat? Yeah, so it's it's basically just a straight 100-yard dash, and he, he usually gets seven, I think it's like 7.5 seconds, which is equivalent to 27.5 miles per hour. So he's fast, too. Wow. But, but yeah, it's, it's really fun getting to travel and – and especially my favorite part is spending time with my mom and like getting to watch movies in a hotel. And it's just so fun to get to do the dash. Um, but yes, we, we do like to travel a lot. Uh, we just went to Tennessee a little bit ago. Um, we'd gone to New York or New Jersey when I was 14, maybe with dash and he got his personal best there. So that was good. And so what does mom think about all this? Is mom there today? Uh, no, she's actually at dinner with my grandparents, but, um, oh, she loves it. We love going on our little trips and she's always been like amazing at supporting me. She's, she's the financer. <laughs> yeah. all these she's, trips. she's the one that invests into this race. Team. Ah, exactly. I see. exactly. And you know, it, it's like, I'm really, really grateful for her because she just, she's so like, it's such a blessing. You know, she takes me everywhere and really wants me to do well with the dogs and let me get another dog and, um, encourages me to practice every day. And so, yeah, she, she definitely loves it. She loves, she is insane about dogs just like I am. So, so that's where well, you is got that maybe where you got it from. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 100%. We have four dogs. Okay. So, and two of them are yours or yeah so um okay one of them is a golden retriever i used to train when i was little and then one of them is a miniature poodle so she's really cute she's my mom's favorite now does she go in the <laughs> lap dog division be honest no she doesn't she's too scared of water no flying poodles no i wish but she, she used to do a little bit of agility but not at a serious level oh so she so so everybody competes in the family i guess so yeah everyone yeah. used to except for zoe Okay. <laughs> a little one <laughs> competitive family and so was mom doing this kind of stuff even before you did like or was no, this that's okay. what everyone asks too at competitions they always ask oh so like did you were you into it first and got her into it but she actually my family had never heard of it i don't i don't even know how i heard of it yeah i was just gonna ask i'm like what yeah like you woke up you're 12 years old and all of a sudden you're like I'm going to teach my dog how to competitively leap Jump in the pool. pool. <laughs> yeah. So the, um, where I got Max from was my mom used to live, um, uh, next to her parents and knew her when she was little. And now okay. she's border collies, does dock diving. She has like 14 border collies 
And so my mom's known her for a while and we're really close with her. That's got to be a fun house to visit. Oh, oh, it's so fun. There's plenty of dogs running around everywhere. And so we got masks from her. Um, so I, I definitely, she helped me a lot. When I came up with it, my mom was like, oh my gosh, you should totally reach out to Brie Benton. Like we like knew her when she was little and, and she has border collies and, and competes. And I was like, oh yeah, maybe. And so I did. And that, that's definitely what got me into dog diving. I would not have done dog diving if I didn't my parents didn't know them so that was definitely a big part of it okay. and then it just hooked like you you yeah. just started with it and it was something that just grabbed you and hooked you in exactly wow. that's it's, amazing how many people are competing in dock diving like maybe whether it's in north carolina which you're located or nationwide or world like how would you guys rank in that like is how many people are competing well there, there is a lot of people i would say and you know the thing i love about dock diving is all the people are so friendly. They're so outgoing. Um, so that's, that's amazing. They're so encouraging, but everyone, every year there's nationals in Orlando. And so you kind of meet everyone there and there's two pools there, but you know, it takes a while to get your, to your dog. So I would say there's a good amount. Um, you just have to get into it and see how many people are at each event, and, you know, but these yeah. aren't always at pools either, right? Are these at lakes as well? Sometimes, yes, they are yeah. at lakes. Yeah, I've never gone to one at a lake. I almost did, but I really want to do that. Because I'm. How do they do? They just put like the measuring. Right. This is what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just put measuring. I think on some floating devices. Maybe I might be wrong, but that's I think what I remember. Um, so yeah, that's really cool to me. And then you mentioned that they're like you're even doing some other sports with them as well. So did this right. like it started with dock diving and then it slowly just transitioned into other sports? Well, it actually started with agility and then dock diving okay. was my second um, sport that I started doing with them and then fast cat. Okay, so we've got three different sports that we're doing. Yes. Anything Do have... else? Do you is there another sport that you're like get your eyeballs on? Not necessarily. Dash does love Frisbee, though, and he's really good at it. So a lot of people have told me I should enter in some Frisbee trials, but there's not much around me. So there's just not many trials held. Um, yeah. But I would love to do that. It would be so much fun. I mean, I think what's the most fascinating thing for me when we start getting into like this dog sports world Right. Is exactly how many sports there are. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't I think that there's there really can be something for everybody. Oh, for sure. You know, um, and for every dog, because like like you said, your little poodle is not a fan of the water. My yeah. my <laughs> hunter who is a Pomeranian mix looks at a pool as though it's a hot lava pit. Right. So, you know, dock diving definitely not a sport. We we actually compete in scent works together. So that's our sport. But right. um, yeah, I would say, okay, if you were going to give somebody advice, like let's say somebody's like, you know what, I really want to give dock drive diving a try. Given that you started it when you were 12, with, I feel like you'd be a great person. With no guidance, just kind of No, like, just doing right. it. Right. I think you'd be, and now you're like going to nationals. I think that you would have some pretty sound advice on like how the heck to right. just do it. Yeah. Um, definitely. I think a lot of it is just positive reinforcement for the dogs. Cause I know, and I've definitely seen a lot of people that don't really, you know, necessarily compete in dog diving, but I've seen a lot of people try to push their dogs into the pool instead of got, yeah. Instead of guiding them into the pool, I've seen people literally, you know, just, all right, go. You're in Throwing the water. In, yeah. Yeah. Which I, you know, but I, I just don't think that that's the best way, especially if you have like really sensitive dogs, like border collies or just working breeds, you know, you got to start them off right. It's just, just very positive reinforcement to get them to love it. And then once they love it, everything will just be so much easier. All the training, because if they love it, you know. I think you mentioned even like toy driven, right? Which- Right, oh, that's, yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah, for sure, because my dogs, Dash doesn't really have a way he feels about water. 
He'll jump in if I throw a toy, but Max, I'll look in the backyard and he'll be swimming around. So the actual- He's just in it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. What are some common breeds that you see in dock diving? Um, definitely a lot of Belgian Malinois and oh, I can a see few that. Border Collies, a lot of Labs, Golden Retrievers, um, Whippets, actually. I see a lot of those. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's I would say that's the majority of the breeds. Um, there's a lot of – there's some hunting dogs, too. Um, I've seen a lot. I've seen almost every breed there at dog diving competitions. It's kind of rare that you only see a few. So if there was somebody that wanted to like, so I can hear, I can imagine like some of our listeners are sitting at home right now and they're thinking, well, my dog runs pretty fast and he's jumping right. my fence every week to get out. And it's a seven foot tall fence. Maybe he would be good at this. Like what are some indicators or something that people could try just to find out if this would be a good fit for them? Okay. Uh, answer that question when we get back from our break. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, I mean, we've broken down even like some of the basic steps as a, as an owner of how to get started, but how might I identify, um, that my dog enjoys doing this? So like right before the break, we were talking like, like there's a lot of us out there that think our dogs are fast and strong and all right. of these things, but how would you even know if this is something your dog would enjoy doing? Definitely. I, I think you said that they love the thing about loving jumping, there's an event in Dock Dogs um, where it's just a like extreme vertical. So it's not out there, it's just up. So the point of it is that they have to jump high. So if they're really good at jumping things, you know, and it's really good alternative because a lot of people think, oh my dog's too bad. I, I can have them jump really high and have them land on the ground. But I think dog diving is really good for that because there's no impact. You, they right. can jump high and they're going to land in water and they're not going to get hurt. So you're not um, seeing so a lot of injuries in this sport in particular? No, definitely not. Um, so yeah, a lot of that. And if they're fast runners, that can be a lot of it because that fast running definitely helps. Yes, um, they're kind of like launching. They are, yeah. Their bodies are like pew yep, off the dog. Exactly, exactly. Uh, splash That's down. A lot of it. Yeah. Okay, so now what happens if a dog's tail is docked? In a dock diving competition, how hard is it to then find their little stop mark? You know, I, I think I heard someone say once that um, there's a couple bubbles that come up right where they landed. Oh. So I think that could be some of it. Um, I'm not completely positive if I heard that right, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So See, now my mind automatically goes to like, was that dog gassy? <laughs> <laughs> like the impact of his belly hitting the I don't know. I guess it might just be like who knows. It who just knows. happens. Yeah, I guess so. How many judges are there? There's usually one judge um and they just take breaks throughout the day. Is do they is it like a photo finish like they take a picture so that they're certain or the judge is like, "Eh, close enough." They, well, they just like they like really get close to because they have a sheet saying their averages, the dog's usual averages. And so they can kind of determine, oh, this dog jumps more in the 20s. This dog jumps more like to 14 feet. I'm going to stand by the 14 feet or the 20, you know. So does this um, sport work like in rounds? Like is there like yeah, round so, one, round two, round three? Right. So you get it's it's splashes basically. So okay. you hold you on. Get, They're called splashes. This get, just got cute. Yes. <laughs> And so um, you get one practice jump if you want it and two real jumps that are going to be um, measured. So each round and you can put your dog two times in a round. It, it works different at some competitions, but most of the time um, it's just you get one per round, one jump, and it just goes by the hour basically, which... You can imagine sitting out in the sun is not the best all the time, but it's fun. And how many, how many uh, teams are typically at an event? Um, you know, I, I really can't remember what it was like before Corona, but there, there's usually about 30 dogs, maybe. I would say. Wow. Sometimes more, sometimes less. 
that's a long day. Yeah, it is. Now, do your does, does your dog get two consecutive jumps, or it's like they do a jump, and then like an hour later they jump no, again? No, they just, they do two jumps, like so maybe like every hour. So you have your time during an hour where you get say like five minutes up on the dock. I think that is. And so in that you can do one practice jump and two jumps back to back, but you know, you can take your time on the dock and let your dog rest. But, um, so yeah, it's just one after the other most of the time. That's fascinating. So you're 17 now (laughs) you're already competing at agility. I mean, you're already on team USA. You're traveling the world. You're doing dock diving competitions every weekend. How often are you at these competitions? Um, during the summer, we actually do dock diving way more than we do it in the winter, just because there's no competitions and it's cold and their muscles aren't relaxed. And uh. so usually we do agility more in the winter and dock diving more in the summer. So I just, wow. yeah. So where do you go from here, Katie? Like, are you just going to be a professional I don't know. Are you that, are you that was that was something that I was interested in because like, we even talked about next? how mom is the uh, the investor in this. Yeah, team. mom's financing everything. Right. Yeah. But like, Pretty what are some of the like in dog sports? Obviously, in in human sports, when you get to the pro level, there's you know money to be made there and sponsorships and all these kind of things. Right. Is that is there a similar environment for dog sports like that? You know, I a little bit. Um, we have. We're with we're working with the AKC right now, um, just for our Instagram page and to promote things that they want to promote and like all that. But it's just a starter thing. Um, but I, I really don't know because there's not much money in competitions at all. There's really right. not. Um, but I'm sure once you move further up, that'll change. And I know a lot of people. What they usually do is just going going to training and holding clinics or having lessons, finding a place to do it at, you know, all that. Because I'm seeing like we need dogish life vests. That's, I mean, I'm just going to put that out there. And and I'm thinking like in the future, like (laughs) I'm just going to come to North Carolina with my Pomeranian and you're going to teach us how to dog dive. Maybe. Maybe. I'll come, I'll come to a Katie Cohn's dog diving clinic. Sure. And, and we'll, we'll. So do you do, do you do any coaching, Katie? No, I don't, I, I just don't think there's just not many people who compete around me necessarily. Um, there were a lot in Texas, there was a good amount in Texas, but not necessarily near me. So I don't, I don't really think I would have the best opportunity for that, honestly, um, just because of where I live and my age and all that. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're on the team, I mean, it sounds like you've got the qualifications. <laughs> Yeah. So, does, so is I mean, that what the, the AKC J-O-A-W-C team is? Yeah. Yes. Very cool. And I think the other thing to think about is like, you're only 17, but you've literally been training dogs for five years. That's true. That's true. That's more experience than a lot of trainers that I know <laughs> out there who are with, training dogs professionally. With mm-hmm. one one hundredth of the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And about 10 times less titles right (laughs) so did you have any like do you have any fun ribbons because i know in scent works they have like these not so crazy ribbons same with agility do you get fun fun ribbons we We love our ribbons um we get a lot of ribbons on agility weekends it just depends for dock diving um they have qualifying jump ribbons and dock diving and a new title is this dash yes this is dash Dash. hi dash Dash. Hi, bud. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, you got a head Hi, tilt Dash. and everything. Hi, Dash. Hi. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's so handsome. <laughs> He's like, this woman in this tiny square knows me. So how old is Dash now? Dash is four. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he's still got a long career ahead of him. He does. Yes. Yeah. And then when are you going to start Max, you think? Um, in about five months. Okay. Wait, no, all right. Three months. Wow. Yeah. So that's Coming up on it. Yep. I know. I did not. I forgot. So So when you say I, starting, is that like just start training? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, um, Sylvia. You can is start it, weaving. 
like doing a lot of the agility equipment around oh, sorry buddy around about uh 14 months just to be safe um but he can do contacts a little earlier than that um but yeah like jumps and stuff you kind of keep down right right well what uh, about rock diving because i know you said that that's really low impact mm-hmm. it's so, um, i think it's eight months it might be or ten um, okay I'm, I'm pretty sure they can start competing at eight months so does he compete in dock diving or just dashed uh he hasn't yet because there hasn't been many because of corona oh right oh, yeah. yeah i know we keep forgetting uh, well it's you summertime know. it's time for that corona stuff to be i know i know i know so this summer if all goes well are you planning on competing both your boys in the dock yes. divings yes oh okay. yes no, is there going to be a sibling rivalry or how's that going to work? I don't know. They seem to really like each other so far. Whose um, ribbons are going to get to hang on the fridge? Oh. Because that um, would matter to me. Josh has, <laughs> has a lot of ribbons that we don't really have room for. I'm pretty sure they're they're just in my laundry room right now. Um, they have their own little box, but. Wow. It's a lot to keep track of. Yeah, shut up. It's a lot to keep track of. So, I mean, you said that you're traveling most every weekend. So are you doing like 20 to 40 events every year? Um, a, a little less than that, but mostly yes. Well, wow. yeah. And That's they're crazy. everything from the dock diving to the agility to the fast cat, fast yeah. cat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We're going to take one more quick break and then okay. we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm looking at Dash and Max's um, Instagram account, and there's a ton of great pictures and all this stuff. You've got over mm-hmm. 5,000 followers, but they've only been doing this for like less than four years. Like, well, Max hasn't done anything yet. And right. so like, like, what has your experience been even just sharing this in the social, community, social media communities and making connections with other people online? Um, you know, it's been, it's been really great. I've met a lot of great people and a lot of girls my age, which has definitely been nice. I mean, I didn't start his Instagram account until I was about 13. So, um, but yeah, 13, 14. Uh, so there's been some, some bad experiences, I will say, um, just with the girls my age, a lot of them can be, uh, Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, very who knows? Very girl-like, we'll say. Oops, I guess. I didn't family. say it. I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, we. I know how they are. I am one, you know. Um. So a lot of that's been. The a good little... news is, Katie. A lot of that goes away when you get to be. Oh, exactly. Not your age. When you get old, yeah. like Sylvia. Yeah, when you get all old and whatever, and then you start to realize, like, oh, JK, like, I oh, need my fellow. Good. Like, we should be building each other up. What are we doing? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, but you know, I could see where, especially at your age, how many other girls your age are competing? Uh, you know, a good amount of them, I would say. There are a, a good amount that don't, though. A lot of them just train at home or facilities and just don't compete. But a, a good amount of them do compete, I would say. So is it, is it a younger... Is it a younger group of people that are doing the competitions? No, well, actually, it's all I, I would say people in their people past their sixties. So it's all uh, over the board. Yeah, so people past their sixties, uh, teenagers, you know, twenty-five year olds, thirty year olds, forty year olds, everyone. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a lot. So the way I see this. Katie, is you're basically like, you're like the new generation of dog mom that's coming on up. Yeah. And I mean, okay, so you're 70 now, you're living at home. You said you can't have any more dogs, but if it was your choice and <laughs> and you were your own woman doing right. your thing, how right. many dogs would you have? Be honest. Oh, gosh. Ooh. <laughs> That really? many, huh? Depends I mean, how big of a pool she has. Yeah. <laughs> Realistically, I would I would probably see myself having more like four dogs, four border collies. 
Oh, but you you want four border collies? That is my favorite. No thing. mini poodle. No mini poodles. No, the bark is too much. It's too loud, too high pitched. I cannot handle that. Um, so, but I mean, if it was really up to me, I would have probably like nine border collies or more. Oh wow, that's because a big I jump. Realistically, never see that happening, but. You know. Never say never. Just need to get enough property and you're good to go. Yeah. Maybe. So your dream is you and nine border collies at a dock diving competition. That would be fun. Reigning supreme. Mm -hmm. I, you think you would need a really big box for all those ribbons though. Oh yeah. That would be a lot. That would be yeah, a just, lot of entry fees, a lot of vet bills. That's a lot. Of, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, a lot. Well, that's what I'm saying. There has to be some yeah, opportunity for some sponsorships out there. Yeah, that's true. Start covering uh -huh. some of that, especially if you're fairly successful. Like, what have, um, what have they like? Maybe a top room. I'm assuming, like, have they won a few competitions or? Uh, Dash. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, he generally, if if he gets a good run in agility, if he gets a good uh, jump and dock diving, he's generally coming in first, just because of his speed and all that yeah see I knew that it, was like, very casual yeah, i know that's what she's i feel like, like katie's been like, holding I mean, back on that i seriously she's <laughs> like i mean generally he wins yeah, what am i gonna say <laughs> generally he's number one generally but that doesn't mean he never really qualifies all the time because he's a fast dog and i can't keep up with him most of the time you know ah. so when he does qualify he comes in first but that doesn't always happen so gotcha yes well, what else might okay. you share like like with like as we kind of like wrap up the show and and dog sports like if there was something that you could share with the guests out there what would you tell them to look for in dog sports uh -oh. like why should somebody get involved you know i think it's it's like it, it's really cool because it's something you don't really experience every day because you're not competing in the sport with people. You can't communicate with them. You can't talk. Like, I, I can't talk to Dash. I can't have a conversation with him and say, hey, like, why'd you go around that jump? Don't do it again. Why did you hesitate at the end of the dock? Why'd you jump early? You know, and it'd be so much easier if I could talk to him, if I could have conversations with him. But unfortunately, I can't. And so it makes it very difficult because it's hard to communicate with a dog when you have no idea how to talk to them. Um, you just have to kind of use what you can when you learn about them. And so I feel like it definitely makes you closer with your dog. And it's just really, really fun to have a new experience like that where you're not necessarily talking to humans and coming up with a plan. You're just trying to do the best thing for you and for your dog and trying to figure it out. And so, and, and when you do well, when you win, it means so much you know it's just so exciting like oh my god like i can't believe i did that with a dog like i made the dog i had the dog do that like it did it for me like i could totally see that being a great bonding experience oh, yeah it's, it's an amazing feeling yeah for sure so would you say dash is your best friend or your soulmate if you picked <laughs> well he he really he really loves me you know i he's such an amazing dog when i leave when i go out of town or anything, he will just lay on my bed until I get back. Um, he will not leave. He also opens my door. He knows that I open doors and he taught Max that, which is great. Oh, good. Yeah, so he'll open my door to come in and sit with me all the time. Um, he just, he loves me. He's so sweet. He's such a good dog. He has such a kind heart. Amazing. All right, well, we've come to the end of our show. I can't believe it. And if you've listened- Almost as fast as Dash. I'm so fast. Well, if you've if you've listened to a couple of episodes, then you know what time it is now. So, Jason, are you ready for your ready. for your dog dad joke? I'm ready. Katie, are you ready for this? Nobody, sure. nobody's ever truly ready. I mean, it better. I just hope it's on theme. I tr I tried to keep it. It's not. It's not that much on theme. Like, how cheesy do you want it to be? Like, like, okay, Katie, on a scale of one to ten, cheese factor. Like maybe like a. Seven. I would be like a good. Ooh. Yeah. Good luck. Okay. okay. I'll I'll stick with this one. All right. Oh. What does a dog get when they finish obedience school? I, I don't know. Their pet degree. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I, she I love, said, she <laughs> said, ha, ha, ha. There you go. I should have made it that way. I just expected that. See, I get him every time. Oh, my goodness. No, it. Her reaction is what got me. I I would I would say that that was a seven on the cheese scale. Thank you. It was. I'm, he really, yeah. You know, it was it was it was cheesy, but not so cheesy that you're like, oh. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. Sure. Oh it's my creative. goodness. Well, there you go. There yeah. we go. Thank you so much, Katie. This was so fun chatting. Keep with us you. updated and let us know how Max is doing oh. as he gets started, and send us. We some can't messages. wait. Yeah, we want to we want to definitely follow both Dash and Max and you on your your journey through all of this. This is fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all. I want to thank all of you for joining us today on the Dogish podcast. I especially want to thank Miss Katie Dash and Max for joining us. How sweet was it uh seeing Dash up the up there and and give us Oh my oh, gosh. Right? Like, oh, his, every time I said his name, his little head tilt. Come on. I think that's the first time that we've actually had dog communication on. Like, he was like, like talking and seeing us. Yes. He was like, there are people in this box. Right. Yeah. Saying my name. <laughs> Super smart boy. Today's episode was very informative. Thank you to Katie for joining us on her first ever interview, which I feel there will be many. I can't believe She's only 17 and she's yep. already been a dog trainer for five years. Make sure That's, you go check her out over check on her out. social media. They've got a great account over there. Lots of awesome pictures of them doing all of these events. And as always, we will have all of our links in the show notes down below. Yes. And you can find her at uh, Border Collie Dash, by the way, on Instagram. You can actually see Dash doing some splash. Mac, <laughs> well, Max will be on there soon, too. Max should be up there by now. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We'll see we'll, we'll see you. We'll hear you. We'll be here next week. Until next time. See you guys.